Alhamdulillah for witnessing another month of, of Ramadan. As I said earlier, many of us say Ramadan starts tomorrow, May 6th. Actually, it has already started since uh, Maulid. So, Alhamdulillah, who has blessed us with another Ramadan? Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to give glad tidings to the Muslim, to the Muslim Ummah, to his companions, whenever Ramadan arrived. He used to give them glad tidings of the fact that the, gate, the gates of Rahman, the gates of mercy, the gates of heaven, the gates of paradise are open that the gates of hell are closed and the shayateen are chained and that Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala frees people from fire every single night of Ramadan and that the fasting person has a dua that will never be rejected by Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala and that the fasting person has two joys one when they break their fast and one when they meet with Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala in the Quran tells us that this fasting which he has prescribed for us is not new. It is something he has prescribed to the previous ummah or to the previous ummah, to the nations which were here before us. But the way he made it easy for us has never been made easy for any of the Ummah before us. And we have that through the blessings of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fasting does not need much description. The word itself tells us what the fasting is about. When we say sawm in Arabic, it is al imsak, to abstain from anything. Whatever you abstain from, you are fasting. In Surah, in surah to Maryam, Sayyidatuna Maryam said, Inni nadartu lir Rahmani, Inni nadartu lir Rahmani sawman. I made a nubh to Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala that I am fasting today. Therefore, I will not talk to anyone. So fasting means al-sawm here means al-imsak, al-kalam. But al-imsak an ayy shay yusamma and al-arabi sawman. Amma sawmu istilahan wa huwa al-imsak الإمساك عن شهوته البطن والهرج بنية التعبد بنية التعبد لله تبارك وتعالى أو بنية التقرب إلى الله تبارك وتعالى to abstain from eating from drinking and from intercourse with the intention with the intention that you are doing such a thing only to worship Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Not because you want to be healthy, it's Ramadan, now I'm going to lose some weight. No, 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 that's not the, you know, now it's Ramadan, I have more time to do this and this. Now, you know, the fasting is not about just being hungry or being thirsty, or not just because everybody's doing it, I'm doing it. Just because I'm a Muslim, I have to fast. I have to have these near. Niyya is of two types. Niyya tul amali wa niyya tul ma'amuli lahu. The intention to act, the intention of the action, and the intention of why I am acting, why I am doing the action, for whom I am doing this. Niyya tul amal. For example, when I have to make niyya for my fast to be valid, 
that I'm fasting tomorrow. But I have to also make near that I'm fasting only to please Allah Taala. I'm fasting because it is an obligation upon me. I'm fasting because Allah made it an obligation. Niyatul amali wa niyatul ma'muli lahu. So fasting of the months of Ramadan is an obligation. It is not something. For example, as I said that many, uh, I mean all the ummah before us were given this obligation of fasting. But many of them now have changed it. Some into a recommendation. Some into something that is not fasting. I was speaking with a brother earlier. He told me in, back in my country, the Hindu people, they do fast, but they still eat. And they still they drink. And they call it fasting. You know? So many have changed. But alhamdulillah, we have not changed yet. May we never change, Ya Rabbah. Amen. So Allah says it is an obligation. It is something He prescribed for us and for the people before us. The Quran says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alikum usiyamu kama kutiba alil ladhina min qablikum min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun. Perhaps you may gain taqwa. Perhaps, He says. That means that not everyone fasting is fasting. Not everyone fasting is fasting. The Prophet said, many are those of you who have nothing from their fasting but hunger and thirst. Why? Because the intention. Why? Because the behavior. The intention. So, the Prophet says also in Sunnah that Islam is built upon five basic pillars. One of those is fasting. Muniya al-Islam ala khamsin shahadat an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad al-rasul wa iqami salah wa ita'i zilaka wa sawmi ramadhan wa hajj al-bayt liman istata'a ilihi sabila. And Ramadhan, as I always remind myself and everyone of you, is not about fasting. It is about the Qur'an, then fasting. Qur'an was revealed in this month of Ramadan. That's what gives Ramadan what Ramadan has, not the fasting. You can fast outside Ramadan, before or after Ramadan. But the value of fasting in Ramadan is because of the Quran. Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran, says Allah Taala. Allah ordered this month, not because of fasting, but because of the Quran. He chose to reveal his own attributes, his own quality, which is his speech to Sayyidina Rasulullah Wasallam, by extension to all of us. To all of us. Quran has been revealed to the Prophet and to all of us by extension. That's what Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. So we take advantage, inshallah, of this month. And I said fasting has two pillars. One is the niya. Two is the imsak. One, there are conditions and there are pillars. When we say pillar, we mean rukun. Rukunu. When we say this is a pillar, that means it's a part of it. When we say it is a condition, that means it's not part of it. Wudu is a condition for our salah to be valid, but wudu is not part of salah. The takbir of ihram is not a condition for our salah to be valid. Valid, it is a pillar without which we are not even praying. So these two pillars, without them, we are not even fasting. The near before fajr, mandam yubayyit siyam qabil rajmi wala siyam adahu. But one near. When the month, when the month begins, is enough. If I intend tonight to fast the month of Ramadan, it's enough for the entire month. Except if I have an excuse, such as sickness. If I am sick and I break my fast, I have to renew my idea. If I travel and I break my fast, I have to renew my idea. If the woman breaks their fast because of their monthly periods, they have to renew their their nail. But if there is no problem, no nothing, you don't have to. And near is not to be uttered. It is to just have in the, in the heart. And inshallah, as we say, we make a program. 
We make a barnamaj for the Quran. We make a barnamaj for more dhikr, for more, for more salah, for, the, for taraweeh. If you can afford it, go to Umrah. You, you know, spend the most or all your time making dhikr and making dhikr. Because the Prophet said, Man lam yada' qawla zuri wal amala bihi, fa laysa lillahi min hajatin fi ayatraka ta'amahu wa shahwatahu au kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever does not abandon qawla zur, you know, vain talk, evil talk, and evil deeds, Allah does not have any need for him to abandon his food and his desire. So if we abandon evil talks and evil deeds, what should we engage in? You have to do something. If you don't do something, that evil habit will come back. So we replace them with dhikr, with the istighfar, with salat ala nabi, with the recitation of the, of the Quran. If you can make i'tikaf, have the new year now. You're ready to spend at least some days in the masjid for i'tikaf. You can afford it to prepare for umrah. The little qadri is in this month of Ramadan, and Allah Taala hides it. Why? Because He wants us to, you know, to struggle and try our best, inshallah, during the entire month of Ramadan. Of course, the Prophet Sallallahu tells us to seek it in the last 10 nights. So inshallah, Taala, we congratulate all of you. And inshallah, we're going to be having um, very good Ramadan visit, Allah Taala. Uh, last Ramadan, we took the Quran and we were diving in the oceans of the Quran. This Ramadan, inshallah, we want to be more of um, more in fiqh. The very um, things we do need every single day to pray, to zakat, and to hike. We're gonna start with a very small book of fiqh, which is one of the most beautiful books of fiqh. Inshallah, I'm not gonna reveal it tonight. It will be tomorrow that we're going to be, inshallah, starting, um, studying it. I'm using this lecture. Um, you can see that I spend a little more time. The taraweh is going to be shorter. Why I do that? Because the taraweh to the Sahaba was lecture. It was a lecture. The Sahaba, when they hear one of them reciting the Quran in prayer, they're listening to a lecture. They're listening to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran that is, is reciting is a lecture. But many of us, unfortunately, we don't have the chance or the luxury, the luxury to, 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 luxury to understand what the Imam is reciting. Some people, they just cry because it's emotional, which is good. Some people cry because they don't know what the Imam is saying. And they do have to cry because they don't know what the Imam is saying actually what the Quran is saying. Because when the Imam recites, it's not the Imam, it's just Allah wa ta speaking through the voice of whoever is reciting. As Ja'far used to say, فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ اللَّهَ يَقُولُ بِعَقِبِهَا Whenever he says something about the Quran, he will say, because I heard Allah saying after I heard he say. Even though he hears when someone reciting, to him it is Allah reciting to him. Because the Quran is the word of Allah. As Imam Ahmad said, when I want Allah to speak with me, I cross with the Quran. So inshallah, we're going to make shorter raka'at and maybe more extended lectures so that we can benefit as much as we can be in Amen. 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 Amen.